We consider our rebuild done at this point, but we want to get our, our new air cleaner assembly fitting. <laughs> and um, so we're going to just go ahead and do our trial fitting here on the bench. Okay, run that as far as far in there as you can. I already did. Just going to make a mark on the threads, which will give us a good idea of how much thread we need to leave um, when we shorten this stud up. What we're doing is um, <clears throat> taking our new stud that came with the air cleaner and we're we're uh, custom fitting it to be the right size. We are going to make this stud be the perfect length. To do that, we need to run it all the way down into the carburetor. We've got it as far in as it will go by hand, but it feels like it's it's still wiggly, and we want to run it in a little further, so we're using a small trick. The trick is to take two nuts tighten them against each other and then you can use the top one as as like a bolt head to go ahead and and run the stud all the way in If it were me, I would make a mark now to where when I cut it off, the um, basically the top of the threads would be even with the top of the wing nut. So it's going to look like because we are installing the carburetor on an intake manifold that has an unwanted exhaust passage. We have a block off plate and we have an extra gasket that we just bought at AutoZone. Eight dollars, thank you very much. This diagram of the bottom of the carburetor is exactly the mirror image of what we've got in real life, but we're going to try following those directions. Back the secondary throttle stop screw out until the secondary throttle plates are closed in the throttle bore. Instructions say to turn that screw until it just touches and then turn it an additional quarter turn. This right here is the secondary throttle stop screw based on the image in the Holly instructions that is a mirror image of this. Right here is where it comes out and it touches the, this metal piece right here. Kaylee is carefully removing these rags so as not to get any uh, junk down in her intake manifold. There, oh yeah, it just covers it. Okay. This is a actual genuine Ford manifold of unknown vintage. It's got that little exhaust riser and that's why we're having to add an extra plate in our stack uh, is to cover that exhaust riser and block it off. Now Kaylee's adding another gasket on top of the block off plate and using our locking nut trick she's threading four studs into the four corners. Here she's adding a one inch spacer that is necessary in this installation because without it the carburetor's moving parts hit the intake manifold. Another gasket and the carburetor's going on top and she's putting a washer on each one of the four studs just to keep the nut from marring the carburetor's surface. And now she's going to go ahead and put a nut on each corner. And last but not least, time to tighten up each one of those four nuts. Yeah, that needs a clean <laughs> <laughs> Here's new fuel filter. It came from AutoZone. It's just a little Spectre performance fuel filter. You should use a new fuel filter with your newly rebuilt carburetor. I did. And which that. end of the fuel filter are you attaching there? The in end. I 
think that would be good. Yeah. Rubber hose going on. Kaylee cheated and used WD-40 to make it slide on easier. Yeah, I did. It'll go down here to make it easier for me to do that. Yay, new fuel filter. Now we're hooking up the choke. Okay, so inside the car, the choke is pushed all the way in. So do I want this here? That's the position that equates to, is having it <clears throat> fully open, okay. not choked at all. Kaylee is running a vacuum line between the distributor and ported vacuum on the carburetor. The other option is to connect a full manifold vacuum at the base of the carburetor. We're going to have to experiment to see which works best. All right, now Kaylee's going to connect her PCV valves, which I expected would just plug into that cap. And it does. There. Okay. Kaylee's putting a nylon bushing on the end of that pin. It's part of our throttle linkage setup. She's going to hook one end of her throttle rod. I guess I'll call it a throttle rod. She's going to hook that into the carburetor and then she's going to push that bushing into the arm that is directly attached to the gas pedal inside the car. And then we're going to try it and see, you know, when you floor the gas pedal, does it open the carburetor up all the way? And the answer is no. Uh, it opens it up most of the way. So then we're going to go back and do a second round of adjustments, um, which basically means she's going to rotate that pin up the threaded rod and shorten the distance so that when the gas pedal is pushed all the way to the floor, the carburetor does open all the way. Okay. Did our adjustment fix the problem? Yes, it did. I can't open the carburetor up anymore with the gas pedal floored, so that's a success. So now it's time to lock that in place. Kaylee put on a washer and now she's locking it into place with a little locking pin. And the one thing we still have to do here is hook the throttle return springs up so that the throttle will return to closed when you let off the gas. Well, we've reached the cool stage of this project, which is the putting on of the brand new air cleaner. <coughs> Better. Yay, I didn't fail. <laughs> it's cool though, on yeah, the video. It does, it does. It's a nice blue color. It's a very pretty air cleaner. It's like 30 degrees outside. Now we're gonna hook up a vacuum gauge. So the first thing Kaylee has to do is pop the cap off of the full manifold vacuum nipple at the base of the carburetor. And then she's gonna come in with the hose that goes off to our vacuum gauge. How much? Until you can let go and the car doesn't die. So we were messing with our idle mixture screws and just to bring a, a result. Um, we started with this idle mixture screw on the passenger side out one and a half turns and optimizing for RPM and vacuum and, and they both seem to agree. Um, just an additional quarter turn out was perfect on this car so one and three quarters out total. On this side um, we tried turning this screw both in and out and um, at the end of the day the starting position of one and a half turns out was what got us max RPM and vacuum. So um, that's how we're going to leave this thing for now. Uh, we also adjusted the idle screw right there and brought the idle down to about 700 which with this automatic transmission seems to work pretty good when it's in gear.
take this thing for a ride. Comments and questions are always welcome, and they help other viewers. Thank you for watching. I low-key don't know how to use a gas pump, which is embarrassing because I'm like 16 and I'm, I'm almost 17 and I've like only gotten gas once. <laughs>